I don't know why going live on Facebook is so hard every single time I try to do this. Um, it wants me to connect some software. I don't use any software for this. Uh, that's not how I have ever done this. Um, okay. Let me just try something else. Okay. Whoops, it just went away. Mm, okay, it says I'm still filming. I just have no idea where my face is. So, um, there, okay, there it is. I'm, I'm not fixing my hair for this. This, is, I, this morning has been ridiculous. Um, also, I have a big forehead, so I'm trying to cover it up because I can't stand it. Um, <laughs> <coughs> and I'm still coughing. <clears throat> So, um, yeah, the flu doesn't go away. I don't know what it is, but it doesn't go away for days. Okay. Now, this is about some questions that were submitted about what to do about the narcissist. And um, also, like, to try to maybe understand them better for, for what that's worth. And then also, at the end, I have a couple questions for y'all just to get you thinking about things. All right. <clears throat> Here we go. <sighs> he says he loves me and can't help the way he is, but he's so hurtful, I, I can't ignore the bad behavior. Is it worth trying to fix him? Okay. Short answer is no, um, because these people have a, a serious mental condition that cannot be fixed. They need years of strenuous therapy um, to start with, because they've got something that their brain just doesn't operate like everybody else's. It just doesn't. They are really and truly in their own little world that where they can do no wrong. I think it might stem from, I think the reason they do that is because it stems from, you know, uh, a fear of, of doing wrong or being wrong to the point, and the fear is so great that it pushes them to create their own reality where they can never be wrong. And they, and, and therefore we never have to say sorry and, and things like that, even though they might kind of say that, I think a lot of times they're pretending. These people don't know, they don't have a hell, they don't have a concept of being sorry for something. They just don't. They just don't. So, <clears throat> um, and they, and they sure as hell don't think there's anything wrong with them. That's, that's not part of their reality, uh, to think that they have flaws. They have a real, um, like self-aggrandized view of themselves and trying to get them to admit to being wrong about something or doing wrong or being hurtful or whatever, you know, that's not, they're not going to say sorry for that. And, and you sure as hell can't fix it. So, um, is it worth trying to fix them? No, no. You are pouring your energy into somebody who, for lack of a better way to put it, doesn't give a shit, is there to use you, and um, thinks that they're perfect. 
and any kind of attention that they can get from you, even if they know it's about something that isn't going to change, i.e. their behavior, they'll take it. They love any kind of attention because it makes them feel grand and it makes them feel like they're a big deal. And um, so that's all you're doing is just like fueling them to just keep doing what they're doing anyway. So the more you pour into them thinking you're fixing them, the more you're draining yourself and just like draining your your life force <laughs> uh, into somebody who is just there for that, exactly what you're doing. So, you know, this is one of those moments where you have to ask yourself, do you want to, who do you want to work on more, you or them? Um, and only you can know the answer to that, but I think we all know what that is because for them, that it's not, it's not worth it. Um, we have such different life stories yet we have similar issues. Why is that? Okay. So <clears throat> a lot of times these people, they have, they have an actual mental diagnosis. Like they have a serious actual issue, but that comes from all mental health issues, whether it's a diagnosis or not, you know, that part doesn't even matter as much, but all issues come from something that happened to you that was done wrong it was just done the wrong way you know you weren't loved right you weren't um you weren't uh, nurtured uh you were ignored um you were you had too much pressure put on you you were watched too much you know and you had eyes on you too much and now you've got pressure to be perfect you know they can kind of those people can relate to that you know they they won't say that but like if I'm sure after plenty and plenty and plenty of therapy, they'd probably be able to tell you, you know, well, you know, I had a lot of pressure on me when I was a kid to be perfect or whatever, or anything. It could be anything, but you can have similar issues to somebody that seems totally opposite from you, and y'all just, the the pain will manifest differently, and the, and the outcome will manifest differently. <clears throat> this is the same with, like I talked about that time about, um, mother wounds and father wounds, um, you know, especially with my ex-husband, uh, like I say, he and I both have uh, father wounds that, um, are not sorted out, you know, but, <laughs> um, and I tried to point that out to him and he told me I was, uh, full of it, but he didn't see what I could see. And I was trying to tell him that we both, you know, were coming from the same pain points and the same kinds of wounds but they they manifest differently obviously I'm, I'm a woman he's a man so we're gonna demonstrate our hurt differently you know but um you can definitely have the same source issue as somebody else and then just act differently from them you know completely different you know you didn't turn into a narcissist over it that's good <laughs> but um that person they just went extreme with trying to escape the pain and you know that and they just created their own reality where there's no more of that and you know they can they can do no wrong and and they're in full control so therefore they can never be done wrong again you know that kind of a thing it, it's, it could be like that that's just a guess you know but I mean just for example <clears throat> um and we can go, that's actually a good topic, so we can probably go deeper in that in another video as well. Um, he has convinced me I said certain things when I'm sure I didn't. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, <laughs> welcome to the club. <laughs> yes. <coughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, I'm not laughing at you, it's just like, I remember, I remember those days. And, um... <laughs> Yeah, that's what I mean. They they are convinced of their reality and their ultimate goal, you know, at least one of them is to convince you that your reality is, is different from what it is because if they can do that, they can control you. And that's when they have you, you'll have conversations with them and then later they'll say, well, you said blah, 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 blah. And then you'll sit there and think, damn, did I say that? You know, and when you have that thought, the first time you have that thought, you need to stop and say, okay, you know, did I really say that? Is that even how I talk? 
would I even use those words? Is that even how I would say that? And why would I say that? If none of that sounds like you, you probably didn't say it. <laughs> you probably didn't say it. So <clears throat> they are very good at um, convincing you that you said or did a certain thing or didn't say or do a certain thing, um, you know, just to, just to have you not know your own reality. And, and the more, the deeper you go into that and the deeper into confusion you go, you know, the, the more control they've got because they can say, oh, well, it's okay. Well, you said blah, blah, blah. So I'm just going to do it. You know, that's, that's how they give themselves permission to do whatever the hell they want with you because <clears throat> you don't remember what you said, you know, like, and they'll twist you like that. So, um, <laughs> yeah, if, if you, if you know you didn't do or say a certain thing and they're telling you you did, just take that as a, as a sign that you, you can just cut it off right there because that's only going to get worse. They don't get better about it. They don't get it out of their system. None of that, that goes on forever as long as you let them do it. It really does. So, <laughs> you just get out when they start that shit. Because you don't need anybody telling you you did or didn't do something. You got too many responsibilities and too many things to worry about and too many people that need you for you to not know if you've done something or not. Because somebody's telling you you didn't when you know you did. Or whatever. You know, don't, don't let it get that way. Um, <clears throat> he has the nerve to tell me I need to work on myself. But none of my friends have ever told me this. What is he seeing that they don't? Okay. Uh, well, he's not seeing shit <clears throat> except his own um, issues that he's, you know, of course, projecting onto you because that's another thing they do really badly, really badly. And um, they tell you that you need to work on yourself because beating you down and destroying um, what ego or confidence you might have puts them in control because they can they're trying to do the way the military does where they're supposedly you know trying to um, break you down completely into nothing and then rebuild you the way they want you to be um the military and narcissists both do a very shitty job of that <laughs> so <clears throat> but that's what they're trying to do they're just trying to make you into what they want and the only way to do that is to tear you apart well, to tear, well, in order to tear you apart, they got to tell you, oh, well, you need to make some changes. You need to blah, 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 blah. Because I was told that, too, that I was a bad person and that I needed to make some serious changes. But I'm a bad person. I'll be goddamn if I'm a bad person. All I've done in my life is kept my head down and my mouth shut and tried to help people. I never bullied anybody. I've, I've, never, I've never been cruel to people. I've never been a backstabber. I just haven't done those things. I just haven't done those things. I don't have that kind of an attitude about life. I never have. For as long as I can remember being alive, I've never had that kind of an attitude towards life. <clears throat> and, and you know, you get one clown that'll come along and be like, oh, well, you need to just revamp who you are completely because you suck. But I love you, though. That, first of all, fuck anyone that says that. That's ridiculous. You don't need to hear that. Because mainly, number one, because it's not true, but... You know, anybody that says that to you when you know you haven't been a bad person, they they are projecting their shit onto you, period. Period. That's it. <laughs> and um, that's not going to cut it. Because, you, like I say, you got enough on your plate and you don't need somebody coming up. You don't need somebody rushing into your life. And this would be somebody, like, I, and it's always the same. This would be somebody who's got permission to get between your legs whenever they want. Uh, take money from you whenever they want, <coughs> get your time and your attention whenever they want. They've got you, they've got your head in a vice. And, and now <clears throat> they've got all these permissions with you, you know, and now they've got the nerve to say, oh, well, uh, you know, you're really not that great of a person. Can you please go drive your car off a cliff and leave the rest of us alone? Like seriously, you know, that is, no one needs to hear that. No one needs to hear that. So if somebody who's telling you you need to just work on yourself and, and be a better person because you're all around not a, not a good person, and this is and you were doing fine in your life before this person came along, that's there's an the issue is them. <laughs> so uh, no, there's nothing wrong with you. You've got stuff to learn about yourself like everyone else does. 
But if you've got one boyfriend showing up saying, well, you know, you're really not that great. Bye. <laughs> so why, why are you here? You know, if I'm, if I'm, if I suck, why are you here? <laughs> so, um, yeah, don't listen to that shit. That's never accurate. Um, he goes through my phone when I'm not around and plays 25 questions about any man's name that might pop up anywhere in my conversations. What can I do to make him stop? Okay. So he goes through your phone when you're not around. Um, so he, he doesn't, see, this is another thing they do. They don't, they don't trust people because they know they can't be trustworthy because they know they're liars. <clears throat> so they'll assume the same of everyone else, no matter how good you are. And that's why he's going through your phone and plays 25 questions. He's playing detective. Yeah. Um, and that's to be as far up your ass as possible and to know everything about you as possible. Because you're not allowed to do that with him, are you? Yeah. So, <clears throat> um, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty typical. Um, yeah, he's, he's just doing the puppeteer thing, the puppet master thing. Um, any man's name that might pop up anywhere in my conversations. Yeah, it's anybody that's just like mildly sexually viable is going to be a target. You know, what's, who the fuck is this guy? Okay, so that, um, and, and a lot of times they won't let you have guy friends and shit like that too for that reason. You know, because any competition is, is um, got to be done away with. Um, and what can I do to make it stop? He's not going to stop. He's not going to. Because this is what he does. And, and this is his reality is uh, keeping you in check. Because it's easier to control you than it is to just, uh, you know, admit that he's got an issue. And um, to let you just live and, and be your own person. That's not part of his agenda. Um, you know, the narcissist doesn't do that. They are like bloodsuckers and they will just get as as far up your ass as they possibly can just for control 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 it's all it is so the, he's not going to stop doing that um <clears throat> um and you can you can put a lock on your phone too you know if it, if it comes down to it because I've, I've had to do i've had to do all that kind of shit change my number everything but you know i know how that is so um, yeah, he's not going to stop doing that because they have no respect whatsoever. Um, next question is when I finally get pissed off, he gets really quiet and acts like he's the calm one. Why is that? To make you look bad. <laughs> it's to make you look bad. That's it. That's it. It's just to make you look bad because the more he turns it around, because that's what they do. That's that's um they they aggravate you until you're you're screaming, and then all of a sudden, and I've had this done to me too. I, I, me and him stood in the hallway of the home of my family home, because I had let him come live with us at, at a certain point, not knowing he wasn't getting in the divorce after all. So he was standing in in uh, the hallway in front of my bedroom with me. And I was growling. I was so angry. I was growling like a fucking bear. <clears throat> like a fucking pit bull. And um, I, I was like, I was, if I'd had a weapon in my hand of some kind, it would have been over with. It would just been over with. <laughs> I just didn't have anything. But um, that's how angry I was. But, um, he pushed me to where I was acting like I was crazy. And then um, he did this thing where he did just like that. He, he, he brought his voice way down and did like a real calm, deep sound in his voice. You know, real quiet, uh, subdued, under control, you know, but not remorseful or sorry for pushing me over the edge. None of that. Just like he was the calm one and like, you know, why was I so upset? And that was, you know, pretty close to the end there where I finally had to like a take anyway. So I, I did get rid of him shortly after that. I know that, but 
that is to make you look bad and, and again, to change your reality because they're making it, they're trying to train you to think that you're overreacting and they're not doing anything wrong and you just need to calm down and you're stressing and you need to find an outlet for your stress and bless your heart, you know, and that's all, <laughs> that's all that, that's them trying to change your reality. That's what they do. And that's part of the gaslighting too. The gaslighting part isn't so much, you know, um, making somebody explode into anger, but it's, you know, making somebody confused about, about what their reality is. And that's their favorite thing to do because you're easier to control when you're confused. You know, um, the media and the government do the same shit to us. As long as we don't know what the fuck is going on, we're so much easier to control. That's why it's all lies. It's the same thing. It's just it's coming from a different source. So, <clears throat> yeah, um, that is um, just another one of their tactics, and they don't stop doing that either. So, but know that when they do that, when they push you like that to where you start acting crazy, and then they tell you you're crazy, um, you're not. You're not crazy. You're not overreacting. There's no such thing as overreacting. There is no such thing as overreacting. I don't care what anyone tells you. Your reaction, any person's reaction to something is coming directly from their experience of something. And the way that they coped with it or handled it or couldn't. And then what you're seeing is, is um, what the, the best way they can deal with it. Or the best they've got in response. There isn't such thing as going overboard because they can only experience things from their point of view. You've experienced all this from your point of view, from your take, and, and everything that has built up to the point where you're finally angry. You know, you, you've had all you can take of it. You're pissed off. You've had enough. It's been, it's, it's been too much. So there is no overreacting. You have a right to be pissed off. So you can't, so don't let them say that. Well, you just need to calm down. No, you need to shut up before I cut your head off. <laughs> because, you know, you, they, they push you until you're acting like you're, you're, they push you until you act crazy like you've never acted crazy before. And then they'll say, well, what's wrong with you? You know, I mean, so don't let them do that. Don't ever let them or anyone tell you that you're overreacting because that's not true at all. Not at all. And it never would be. Um, why is it that when I ask him about the stuff he asks me about, he dances around it, but I always have to give answers no matter what. <laughs> because, like I say, being in control means being fully informed. And being fully informed means um, he's got to know everything about you and you're not allowed to know anything about him because that's not how this works. <laughs> and... Um, that's yeah it's just control that's all it is a lot of most of this stuff boils down to them just being in control because that's what they hunger for control and attention so um especially uh, getting their questions answered and stuff like that that's a way of getting attention you know um uh, but that that's just it's just something they do <clears throat> their way of um Getting acknowledgement sometimes is, is to, you know, play 25 questions like that other person said um, that I'm well familiar with the playing 25 questions. I know how that feels. So, yeah, but um, knowing everything about you and knowing your whole private life and knowing this and knowing that and you not being allowed, allowed to know about them, that's because they've got so much other shit going on that you're not supposed to know about. You know, like the one I had that was the last one I had when I finally started doing my soul searching, um, the last one I had, he, uh, he told me the whole time he was in the middle of getting a divorce. And I find, and like months later, I found out they not only weren't divorcing, but you know, they didn't get along, you know, but they weren't divorcing and she was looking for him and he was staying at my house and he didn't want to get caught at my house and his truck wasn't supposed to get caught in my driveway and all this other shit. And it's like, I didn't know it was like that. And I was never allowed to go through his phone. Oh, hell no. Not that I did anyway. I never make demands like that because I don't, I, I don't care because I, I trust him, you know? Um, but I mean, you know, they just, 
it takes a lot of work to, to create a reality that is different from the reality we're all living in. So that create that, that takes a lot of detective work and a lot of thinking and planning and manipulating and maneuvering. And that means they've got to have all the info they can possibly collect on everybody around them, you know, so that they can move the pieces around the board the way they want. It takes a lot of spy work for that. So that's why they do that. Um, <clears throat> my health is not the best and he lacks empathy entirely. I've done nothing but help him. And even when I need a little help in the kitchen or wherever, he just tells me that's your job. Get used to it. How do I make him, how do I make him understand I need a little help here and there? Okay. Um, he's, and you know, he's not going to understand that because he thinks that his job is to be appreciated and admired by you and um, that he shouldn't have to break down and, and assist you with something. He shouldn't have to lower himself to that because that's not why he's there. And you, him, when he sees you with um, the not good health and needing help and stuff like that, that he sees that as your weakness. And it's not, but he sees it that way. And he's going to use that because they don't have a good viewpoint. They don't have a good understanding of what true weakness and true power is. They'll see something like that as a weakness and they'll use that. And they'll have you thinking it's a weakness. And then he'll turn around and say, well, I'm not going to help you with that. You know, you're on your own. Um, that the reason he doesn't want to get involved in that situation and help you is because that requires him not being the center of attention or him not being taken care of. If the effort to be, if the effort to take care of something isn't coming to him, then he's not, he's probably not going to be interested, you know, because it's not about him. You have to do something, you know, that's not about him. Well, you, well, whatever, fuck you do it on your own. You know, it's like, he's probably thinking that. So, <clears throat> um, you're probably not going to get any help from him because he's being an ass and he's self-centered and only thinking of himself. He's probably in there on the sofa watching, you know, the fucking family guy <clears throat> and, um, you know, waiting for you to hurry up and fix something, you know, and cook something. So that's not going to get any better. Um, there are plenty of men out there who will um, respect you and, and want to help you and see your good points and see your strengths and and not leave you hanging like that. And, and he's be, well, he's got to go first. He's got to go. Um, okay, so those were pretty good. <clears throat> they were all kind of different, so those were good. Um, and then for the last part, um, I have questions to ask yourself, which is, uh, what are the top three things that occupy your mind when it comes to dealing with your narcissist? And that would be your worries with them, um, your fears and things like that. Top three things that, that worry you when you're, you're dealing with this person. Um, do you have to... D does he bother you about your whereabouts? Um, does he fight with your family? Uh, does he not help you um, w with your child? Um, do you not have any privacy? Is he trying to um, pay your bills so that you know you have to go to him for help and shit like that? You know what's what are the top three things that 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 person is making you really pull your hair out about? And then. My other question for you is, um, what top three activities do you and the narcissist do together, good or bad? Um, mainly we're looking at the bad stuff because that's the stuff that needs to get cleared up and understood. And, um, yeah. And you can look at the, the good stuff too, but don't think, I always made the mistake of thinking that the good qualities I had, I, I saw in them, I wasn't ever going to find or get in anyone else. And that was a huge, huge, huge lie that I told myself because I didn't know any better, you know, and, um, I, I, yeah, I, I would, I would tell myself over and over again, well, hell, I'm not going to get anything better than this. I better take this while I can get it. 
and that and they knew that I felt that way they knew I felt that way and that was how I got stuck that was how I got stuck in there so don't ever no matter how good you y'all's you know activities are together whatever they may be don't ever think that you can't get that with somebody else because you can there's always there's too many people in this world to think that there's not going to be any replacement there's way too many people in this world so don't ever let it get to that point um but yeah those are some good questions um those are pretty good so I'm going to leave it at that for today. I didn't want to drag this out. Um, I didn't want to drag it out too long. Um, but anyway, I hope that that <clears throat> cleared some things up. I'm going to leave this, you know, like I always do, <clears throat> leave the replay. Um, I don't ever delete my lives or anything, so... Um, you know, you can always come back and, and watch this later or whatever, ask questions, what have you. Uh, message me, you know, all that kind of good stuff. And, um, and that's it. 30 minutes, that's long enough. Um, and then like I say, if y'all want to submit more questions and make this like a regular thing or something we can do, that's cool. We can do that. That's, you know, that's, I'll, I'll make time for that. That's perfectly fine. Um, cause it's a good way to, to share examples and the questions are anonymous too i don't tag y'all or anything like that and you don't have to you know so if whatever you want to ask don't don't be shy don't be afraid we'll we can put it out there and just clear it up and that way we all know that we're all going through similar shit and um and we're not in this alone no matter how crazy it is you're not alone and um well you know yeah so the live, the live questions, I think that's good. Um, so send me some more of those, and then we'll probably do like a once a month thing. Unless it gets really frequent, then we can do more. And that's it. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I've got a lot to do today. Uh, and it's Wednesday. It's only the middle of the week. <laughs> so I got, a lot, I got a lot going on. Tomorrow's going to be a little bit busy, um, but I'll still be around. And, uh, I got to put a bookcase together today and I'm not looking forward to that, <laughs> but I'm going to do it. So anyway, okay. Um, but thanks for listening. I hope this helped. And, uh, you know, if you have any, any other questions or if you're interested in my online course, um, just message me. We'll do the payment. I'll send you the link. Um, I have three spots open, open as of right now for, um, one-to-one -one coaching. So, um, you guys just let me know, you know, if you're feeling it, we've got 60 days left in the year, you know, you gotta ask yourself how you want to end this year. If you want to start the next year, you know, feeling like a new person, I'm right here whenever you're ready. So, um, thanks a lot and, uh, I'll see you around.